Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott and Four Guys is just bloody brilliant, isn't it, to be honest? I mean, the exact sort of game that we all, you know, didn't realise that we wanted. The kind of multiplayer that prioritises the amount of people that can play rather than going down the, you know, the more sort of high-end route of making a Call of Duty style thing and then seeing how many players can that be applied to. Four guys with developers Mediatonic just thought, let's just see if 60 people can, I don't know, kick a football or go down a platforming gauntlet or fight each other over a handful of eggs or something like that. It's brilliant. Like I said, it kind of came out of nowhere and I, that's all I've been playing uh, for the last couple of days. So, you know, with the next big game being the Avengers next in September, um, we might as well play a whole bunch of four guys together. So with that stuff in mind, um, the amount that I've been playing, I've kind of noticed that per individual stage, you tend to get a handful of tips and tricks that only really apply to those stages. And I thought that I would share them. So with that stuff in mind, I'm Scott from whatculture.com and this is four guys, 10 expert tips and tricks the game doesn't tell you. And yes, I'm saying I'm an expert. I've won a whole game and I've done that trophy where I taunted before I went over the finish line. So whoop de doo I'm in the 1.6 rarity bracket, at least as of right now when I'm recording. Number 10, jump between hexagons in hexagon to give yourself more time. This hexagon stage tends to be the final one. It tends to be what everything comes down to. And it's a series of different platforms that you're trying to stay on without falling down to the next one below. The controls in Fall Guys aren't exactly the most precise or the most responsive, but if you get the timing right, you can just hop from hexagon to hexagon, making sure that that elongated time in the air will free up enough time for you to survive in the long run. Number nine, Whirly Gig's first poll can launch you into the lead. This might be considered a little bit of a glitch and they might patch it going forward, but just the way that Fall Guys physics works, if you can get caught by that very first poll at the beginning of the Whirly Gig stage, chances are it'll launch you all the way to the front. Um, the way that this stage works as well, you can't fall off the sides in that initial part where the yellow barriers are still on screen um, or part of the level. So yeah, let yourself get caught by this giant purple arm and hopefully you can gather some steam to get out ahead of everybody else. Number eight, holding R2 slows you down. So this only really matters in Fall Mountain when you need to get to the end of the stage to be able to do one last heroic jump to grab the crown out of the air because if you're holding R2 in preparation for that in the run up to the crown itself, your character will slow down. When they do that animation where they're gonna go grab, they'll slow down just a little bit, which can be enough for someone else to run past you. So basically hold R2 just after you leave the ground and then your character will put their arm out and then you can try and grab the crown. Number seven, only memorize a group of four tiles in perfect match. If you're anything like me, you're probably freaked out at the idea of a memory puzzle in the middle of a game. Um, and I got around this by literally just focusing on four tiles. Like, you know, the one that you're on, the one next to you, and two more that are ahead of you, that little group of four. Um, any sort of selection of four is a hell of a lot easier to memorize than panning the camera out to see where everything's gonna be. And um, because this mode is only a three stage thing, um, it starts out with two fruits to match, three then four. Um, as long as you're always memorizing a set of four tiles, you'll always know exactly where to be. There's an off chance that when you get to stage three or four, the one piece of fruit that gets highlighted on the outside screens is outside of the four that you've been watching. Chances are just through sheer probability, the fruit that pops up on the screen or on the outside will be one of the four that you've been keeping an eye on anyway. Number six, use the jump dive to clear the final row in tiptoe. This is how I got my first, first place in doing any of the races. Um, Tiptoe is a mode centered around the idea that a whole bunch of tiles ahead of you, uh, some of them are real and some of them are fake. As you start to walk through this, um, you know, plethora of potential platforms you could be standing on, the vast majority of them are gonna fall away. So you need to find out which path is the real way to go and stick to that. If you're out ahead though, you're the one falling through all the wrong tiles and someone behind you is gonna get out ahead um, or at least realize where, where they're not supposed to go. Um, if you basically just hold back Back, stick with the crowd, let someone else, let somebody else be the guinea pig, figure out the path, hang back in the middle, and as soon as you're one row from the end, not the row that touches the checkpoint, but the one behind it, get on there, jump, dive, and you can clear that last row to get through the finish line yourself. Number five, in egg scramble, throw enemy eggs back out from inside the net. This is some devious ass tactics and I saw it over on Reddit and I've seen it across social media as well. I didn't even think to do this, but literally if you want to go down the more aggressive route during egg scramble, jump into the opponent's net um, and don't bother grabbing an egg and jumping back out again. Just jump, let go of R2 and your character will throw the egg back out the net whilst you stay inside. So you can literally just hang out in an opponent's net, jump, throw their eggs back out, just 
be the worst egg throwing maniac you could be um, and empty the enemy's nest out um, or butt basket out or whatever the hell it is and then jump back outside and mop up the rest of the eggs, get them back to your home base. The way that this level's built, there's a small valley that kind of goes from each enemy base back to the middle. So as long as you're throwing your eggs into that divot or whatever, the momentum, the physics will carry those eggs back to the middle. And it means that once you jump back out, you can just get back to them and take them back to your home base. Number four, jump down ramps to speed up. This tends to apply to the gate crash level where at the very end there's that lovely downward slime filled ramp thing that leads to three other gates that you need to get right to jump through to the checkpoint. And um, the way to really get ahead here if it's neck and neck and you're going into that final stretch is to jump onto the slime ramp itself. That means that you'll land and just keep going at that speed and um, building up a little bit as you go. And hopefully providing you've got the gate right at the bottom, you can continue the momentum to just soar right through and it's sometimes bounce through the checkpoint. Number three, use aerial drops in tail tag. If you've been playing Ghost of Tsushima like I have, just employ the same tactics. Assassin's Creed, Ghost of Tsushima, Horizon Zero Dawn, whatever you want, just bring in the old the old school aerial drop into a nice wholesome game of Fall Guys because when you're playing tail tag, it's way better to just drop down on someone whilst holding R2. You'll knock them down, take their tail, and you can be running away whilst they're still wondering what the hell's going on. I would totally recommend this, uh, this tactic, especially if you're in the last few seconds of the round when people are starting to hide underneath different alcohol and trying to stay out the way of other players. Just stay around the top level and keep an eye on who's below you. As soon as they stop, jump down, knock them the F out and take their tail. Number two, land on your stomach in DoorDash to get back up faster. Everything in Fall Guys is physics-based. There's tons of bugs and glitches online of different people being stuck on parts of the geometry and whatever else. Um, and at the very end of DoorDash, it does end with a giant vertical drop that most of the time you're just gonna run out and just realize that you're falling, smash into the ground, become a big physics pile, a big bean pile, and have to sort of scramble to get going again. One of the other ways to get around this is to dive before you go off the edge of the ledge so that you fly through the air like Superman, land on your stomach, and for whatever reason, the game seems to let this translate or uh, factor into you being able to get up faster. I don't know why, I don't know what programming is in the game to govern the physics and the animations when one thing starts and the other thing ends, but I found that jumping down this ledge tends to save you more often than not. And number one, jump dives can redirect you in midair. The jump dive is absolute king. I would say use it as many times as you want. Um, like I said before, I think it gets you off the ground faster than landing on your feet and falling over. Um, I would use it to jump over the gates, to smash through doors and whatever, but there are some other specific uses um, you know, based around the idea of redirecting yourself in midair. Now you're not gonna be able to do a 90 degree turn or anything. We're talking, you know, a fraction of degrees, but it can make all the difference in something like Whirly Gig, where at the very end, you have to pick a specific spot to go through when that very slow propeller is going around. If you wanna jump around it and then press square after you've hit X, you're in midair to jump like one direction and then back into the final platform, I found that can work too. Um, I'd also say use this thing in Hoopsie Daisy um, to be able to jump through the hoop that lands in between those two ramps that go towards the edge of the level. Um, if you've played this mode, you'll know exactly what I mean. There are a couple of ramps on both sides of the world, uh, on the map rather, where there is a, a hoop that falls down in the middle and it's at the most awkward angle. However, if you jump, if you do like a base jump, go to the edge of the ramp, just tap X, fall down, then press square, you can redirect your fall guy to I don't know, kick off midair and go straight through the hoop. Just keep in mind that you do have some control over your midair physics, providing you know when to hit square to dive at the right time. And those have been my tips and tricks, my expert tips and tricks for Fall Guys, but let me know your own favorites down in the comments below. Also, if you get time, please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.